We're in week 24 of the NHL season and the chaos just hasn't stopped. We've got coaches making ballsy decisions, teams fighting in practice, and tensions reaching an all-time high in the season as the push for the playoffs hits another gear. It was a busy week for NHL hockey, so let's cover it all in this video. Sunday, wild and ballsy. It's that time of the year where the sun comes out and everyone in the NHL decides they want to drop their balls on the table and push for the playoffs. This week, we saw the Minnesota Wild go full on Randy Marsh and pull their goalie in three on three OT to give themselves the man advantage. Matt's the rat Zuccarello with a slick pass to Baldy and he buries to win the game for the Wild. With the Wild needing every point chasing the wild card spot, this was a bold move considering that if they got scored on, they would have ended up with zero points. Personally, I didn't know that rule because I'm a bird, but neither did Boldy who got the game winner. Either way, wild coach John Hines has big brass ones and it's great for hockey. If you want a summary of the Penguins game, just watch this giveaway 68 seconds into the game by Latang over to Connor McDavid. Embarrassing effort from the Penguins who get shut out for zip. The Chicago Bedards scored a touchdown against the Coyotes. Bedard had two goals and one assist in this one, and the Hawks decided to try once being officially eliminated from playoff contention. The Carolina Hurricanes continue to be the silent assassin in the East as they steamroll the Flames 7-2. Meanwhile, the Islanders continue to buzz with their sixth straight win over the Anaheim Ducks. Islanders are starting to adjust to head coach Patrick Waugh, and if they sneak in, I like them to steal a series with Ilya Sorokin being their goalie. But first, you gotta get to the dance. Before we hop into Monday, I want to thank Vaporfresh for sponsoring today's video. Vaporfresh is a non-toxic plant-based spray that cleans and deodorizes equipment the right way. I live in a condo, so I give my equipment a quick little spray of Vaporfresh, and then I hang it up to dry. When it's time to play, my equipment is back to smelling fresh, and I'm ready to go. You can grab your bottle today for 10% off by clicking the link in our description. Monday, Rempe Rodeo. The Rangers and Devils squared off on Monday and fireworks were to be expected after these two teams last met. Last time, Rempe crushed Nathan Bastion and got ejected. And the Devils ate some criticism of them being a soft team, so they went out and traded for tough guy Curtis McDermott. Early on, McDermott asked Rempe to go, Rempe gives him the cold shoulder and nothing happens. With a 1-0 lead, Rempe screens the goalie, no one is moving that tree, and he plays a big part in the Rangers' second goal. Immediately after that, Rempe throws a hit and catches Siegenthaler with an elbow up high. That draws the attention of McDermott, refs hate the fun and stop it from getting out of hand, and Rempe is ejected from the game without having to drop the mitts. To top it all off, he waved goodbye to the Devils bench. Rangers win, and after the game, McDermott said that he lost quite a bit of respect for Rempe. Either way, Rangers get the last laugh, and the Devils fail to escape the soft allegations. Now, of course, right after I give the Islanders their flowers on Sunday, they go and lay an egg against the Kings in a 3-0 shutout for David Riddick. Speaking of shutouts, Connor Hellebuck hopped on the trend with his fourth shutout of the season, and the Jets have had a strong reaction after being called out by their coach a few games back. They've now won 11 of their past 15, and they look like they could be a tough out in a seven game series. Bruins fans saw flashbacks of 2019 after the St. Louis Blues spanked them 5-1. If anyone can tell me if the Bruins are frauds this year, please let me know because I just can't get them figured out. I don't think they are. I think they're a solid team, but hey, I thought the same last year and well, I was wrong about that too. Tuesday, Bubble Bedard. Now you're never going to believe this, but the highlight of Tuesday was a game between the Blackhawks and the Ducks. I know, toilet bowl qualification written all over it, but Connor Bedard stepped up to the plate and the 18 year old had 5 points in this one with a goal and 4 assists. He's now got 51 points in 52 games and that puts him in the Crosby McDavid caliber for rookie seasons. The Ducks however weren't very impressed as things got heated in the third and we almost saw a goalie fight as Gibson comes to challenge Morazic. But once again, the refs step in and rob us of the fun. Hawks win big and the Bedard show keeps rolling. Prior to the Rangers and Canes game, Rempe got four games for his elbow, but luckily he usually plays less than five minutes a night. This game had playoffs written all over it from the start. It was a defensive showdown between two Metro juggernauts, but Adam Fox's goal would be the lone goal in this game, and Shesterkin would get his second straight shutout for the Rangers 1-0 win. 
Ever since the Detroit Red Wings put an ad on their beautiful jerseys, they haven't won a single game. The collapse continued in an ugly way on Tuesday as they got royally spanked by the Sabres 7-2. The Wings fall out of a playoff spot after the game and the Sabres have suddenly narrowed the gap to being 5 points out of a playoff spot. It's going to be a dogfight in the East, but can you imagine if the Sabres actually sneak in? I'm convinced all they need to do is just keep wearing their goat head jerseys and they'll easily find a way into a playoff spot. To end the night, everyone was hoping to see the Las Vegas injured reserves lose to the Kraken, but unfortunately, being the NHL's villain requires you to upset everyone. Jack Eichel takes this gorgeous alley-oop pass for Petrangelo and buries on the breakaway in OT to give Vegas the win. They continue to hang on to the last wildcard spot for now, but the house always wins. Wednesday, disaster in Detroit. To start Wednesday, we had a fight breakout in practice for the Detroit Red Wings between young forward Lucas Raymond and veteran defenseman Ben Sherratt. The frustration is at an all-time high for the Wings as they've lost six in a row and it just boiled over in this practice. Now, this isn't always a bad thing. Things happen in practice, guys get heated, and then you move on and get over it. It's a part of the game, but sometimes they can actually bring a group even closer as we saw with the 2019 Blues. They had a fight in practice as well, and they ended up winning the cup. At least if you're a Wings fan, that's the story you gotta tell yourself to get some sleep. It was a lighter night in the NHL, but that didn't mean the chaos stopped by any means as we got Ovi versus McDavid. Ovi gets a great pass with a yawning cage and Stuart Skinner says, not today boy, and makes an unbelievable paddle save on Ovechkin. Ovi can't believe it, he's checking his blade after the play for answers, and that right there is good for our vapor fresh, disgusting save of the week. It was stat night for the Oilers, Drysettle McDavid combined for seven points, Hyman got another hat trick, and Connor Brown finally got his first goal of the season. It was a feel good night for Edmonton as they win 7-2. Jordan Binnington continues to have a solid season as he made 40 saves to help the Blues beat the Kings 3-1. That's a big win for St. Louis as their playoff hopes are hanging on by a thread. The Preds on the other hand stay hot as they win 4-2 over the Jets and extend their point streak to 13 straight games. Canceling that team trip to the Sphere to watch U2 was the best damn decision that team has made all season long. Finally, the late game saw two Western heavyweights go at it in the Canucks and the Avalanche. The first half of the game was all Vancouver as they jumped out to a three goal lead. But the dog Nathan McKinnon is having one of those years where he just won't be denied. An extended five on three penalty gave the Avs the chance to jump right back in this game. McKinnon would hammer one home to extend his point streak to 14 straight games. The Avs would storm all the way back to win it in OT on the power play yet again. They snap Vancouver's four game win streak and the dog just can't be stopped and his MVP season continues with him calling that the best win for Colorado all year long. Thursday, the bird surge. Evgeny Kuznetsov and the bird Selly is officially back. He gets his first as a cane and Carolina has a statement 4-0 win against the Panthers. The Hurricanes hit the bird surge after the game and we got to see an emotional Kuznetsov. He's been in and out of the player assistance program this year while being sent down to the AHL, so it's certainly been a roller coaster of a season for him. If things stay in order, he could be a difference maker for the Canes in the playoffs. Braden Point had himself a night as he picked up 6 points in a 6-3 win over the Rangers. Tampa hasn't looked like the intimidating team that they've been in the past few years this season, but they usually got a knack for kicking into another gear in the last 10-15 to 15 games of the season. Also, if anyone sees Morgan Riley, don't show him this shootout attempt from Claude Giroux. Rockstar behavior from him to end the game in a shootout with a slap shot from the hash marks. Sends still suck, but you love to see it. Another thing most fans will love to see is the Vegas injured reserves losing 4-1 to the Flames. Imagine they pissed off the entire league just to end up missing the playoffs. It is wishful thinking for most fans, but they are hanging on to the last spot in the Western wildcard and anything can happen. The Eastern Conference wildcard race got even more interesting on Thursday as the Sabres, Penguins, Devils and Caps all won while the Red Wings and Islanders lost their games. That makes things nice and tight in the playoff race as all those teams are within 5 points of each other for the last wildcard spot in the East. Friday, Toilet Bowl Blowout Only two matchups on Friday and you were probably better off doing literally anything else 
but watching these games. The Jets beat up on the Ducks 6-0, while the Kings did the same with a decisive 5-0 win over the Chicago Bedarts. The Toilet Bowl teams got blown out on Friday, and although these games didn't matter, Saturday would be the complete opposite. Saturday, Wild Card Drama. With there being a log jam for the last wild card spot in the East, there are some big time games on on Saturday. The first being Buffalo versus Detroit. The Sabres jumped out to an early lead, but Detroit tied it up, and then in the final minutes of the second, it was none other than Showtime himself and Patrick Kane to come up clutch. An unbelievable diving poke check by Comfer to get the puck to Kane, and from that point, the Red Wings never looked back. They win 4-1 and take a huge two points in the wildcard race. This was a must win for both teams, but if you're a Sabres fan, you had to have known that once you get the hope that the Sabres may actually make the playoffs, they are scientifically proven to let you down. Next in the wildcard drama was the Islanders versus the Sens. Ottawa may be a bad team this year, but they're going to love playing the spoiler down the stretch as Brady Kachuk had himself a game. The Islanders almost lost this game in regulation, but a power play goal from Bo Horvat with 38 seconds left in regulation helps the Islanders get at least a point. Too bad Brady's hat trick calls game an OT, and the Islanders fail to get two points against a team that they should probably have no trouble beating. Let's shift over to the Penguins and the Devils, who continue to give their fans crippling depression. There are teams who play themselves into the playoffs, and others who play themselves right out of it. The Devils and Penguins both take an L on Saturday, making their playoff hopes seem like a pipe dream. Remember what I said about Tampa earlier in the video? Well, their best player in Andre Vasilevsky had a monster game making 47 saves in this one, and it wouldn't be the Battle of Florida without these two teams wanting to tear each other apart. Captain Stammer scores two in this one as Tampa takes this game 5-3. Now, it wouldn't feel like springtime in hockey without the Leafs blowing a lead. So, when they had a 4-2 lead with a minute and a half left to go against the Hurricanes, Carolina simply realized who they were playing and they tied the game up with 5.8 seconds left in regulation. Jake Gensel goes backhand five hole to win the game in a shootout. And although Leaf fans were maybe complaining about the officiating online, the Leafs still found a way to lose and they went 0 for 4 on the power play. The Leafs unfortunately put on another clinic for blowing a lead. The Nashville Predators on the other hand go 12-0-2 in their last 14 games as they beat the Kraken 4-1. There's truly some Ted Lasso magic going on in that locker room ever since they got spanked by Dallas. TJ Oshie was also playing in his 1000th game as the Capitals take on the Canucks. Ovi scores goal number 841 in his career for his chase for Gretzky. More importantly though, that goal is huge for the chase in the wildcard spot as that would be the game winner and the Caps pull within one point of the Red Wings for the last wildcard spot in the East. Then we had our main event in the late game which featured McDavid versus McKinnon. Except this game was much more of a showcase of how great these two teams actually are. Playoff feel all the way through but newly acquired Sean Christopher Walker comes up huge with a two goal game and Arturi Lekkonen would pot the OT winner. How about this play by McKinnon, dying seconds of OT and he kicks the puck up to his skate and throws a perfect no look backhand to Lekkonen to bury the game. He extends his point streak to 15 games while McDavid and Dreisaitl combine for a minus five and were held pointless in this game. Hopefully we get a seven game series between these two teams because it would be absolute dynamite. So, what did you think of week 24 of the NHL season? Let us know in the comments down below what surprised you most about this week. And also, feel free to drop your hot take in the comments down below. If you also want to check out some of our deeper breakdowns from this week, click on any of the videos here and subscribe to the channel.